morning, Year 7, and welcome to Gosford High School. It's a shame that some of you weren't able to be here with us today, but we're here to introduce ourselves. I'm Mr Smith, I'm the Principal of Gosford High School. And my name's Mr Marchant, I'm the Deputy Principal for Year 7 2022. Together, uh, we'll be ensuring that you have a great journey here at Gosford High School. You're a very special group of students, and uh, I've just talked to your, your soon-to-be colleagues and uh, peers that are joining us from Sydney today uh, on their journey through Gosford High School. And tomorrow we'll be having the students from the Central Coast. All in all, it's 180 new students that are going to join us at Gosford High School um, to come and enjoy, I guess, the opportunities that we have an offer at this school. Uh, Mr. Marchant will be working very closely with me and his areas will be different to mine while I leave the school and ensure that we have the resources and the facilities and the teaching programs to give you the best opportunities. Mr. Marchant's role is more likely. Yeah, look, I'll be looking after you guys day to day and, and supporting your well-being and um, your academic progress um, and supporting your teachers. Uh, looking forward to meeting you all on day one next year uh, and I hope you have a, a great rest of the year uh, at your primary schools and, and uh, welcome to Gosford High School. Yeah and welcome and lastly I'd just like to remind all the parents that uh, get a chance to view this that we are offering a uh, Zoom meeting for parents tomorrow night, Tuesday uh, at 7pm. There is a link um, that is on our website and that will um, be an opportunity for us to um, talk to the parents and give you more information about uh, your child's journey to Gosford High School and once again congratulations and uh, welcome to the Gosford High School community. Thank you. See you later. Hello Year 7. We're very sad that you can't be with us uh, for your orientation today but we would like to extend a warm welcome to you. We're very excited to meet you in 2022. We're going to have a great time here at Gosford High. And we can't wait to meet you. I'm Miss Love. And I'm Mrs Montgomery. And we'll see you soon. Hello Year 6 and welcome to your virtual tour. Today I'm going to walk you through some of the main places around the school to hopefully make your first day a little bit easier for you. So right now, as you can see, we are in the basketball court. Um, so at recess and lunch, if you um, like to play basketball or netball or any kind of ball games, um, you're free to use this area. Behind me you can see um, the volleyball courts as well. And then what we're going to do is walk over this way and I can show you our oval too. Drama room. So at our 
school we only have the one drama room so if you're into drama club or you ever need to find your drama teacher then it's likely that you'll find them in this classroom here next to our drama room We also have our music rooms. Um, so again, we only have two music rooms, this one and then the one down there as well. Um, so if you ever have music, it's likely that your classroom will be up here. Next to the music rooms, we then have our PDH PE staff room. Okay, so in our PDH PE staff room is where you'll find your PE teacher. If you um, play a sport as well, usually on this little cork board here, there'll be a list for you to put your name down for trials as well. So if you ever want to try out for a team, it's likely that you'll need to come to the PDHPA staff room and pop your name down on the list here. Now you'll come to know each of your classrooms and once you get your timetable, you'll familiarise yourself with that. But there is one classroom that I want to show you that's really important if you ever need to find me. So of course, my name is Miss Love and I'm going to be one of the new advisors for next year as well. staff room, then you'll find me in A5. Um, so this is my classroom, so if you ever, if it's during class time, um, then you'll find me in this classroom here. Now we're going to head around to our office spaces. have our deputy principal's office so you'll find all three of our deputy principals in these spaces if you ever need them so Miss Klempert, Mr Marchant and Miss Scalise can all be found um, within these office areas here. The next really important room is our first aid room so if you're ever injured or if you feel sick um, or if you're sent to the sick bay for whatever reason um, this is our first aid room just here. Across from our first aid room is our print room Okay, so you'll only ever need the print room um, if your teacher sends you there. If you need to do your own printing, if you want to print out an assessment task or anything like that, you'll need to go to the library. Next to the first aid um, room, we have our attendance office. So here um, we have Courtney. So if you're ever late to school, you'll come and sign in here. Um, and then Courtney will send you on your way to class. After the attendance office, we then have our principal's office. So this is where Mr. Smith lives. If you ever need um, the principal, you'll find him in there. From here, we have the office. Now, now this is our main office. Um, and so, <laughs> if you're ever lost um, or ever in doubt, um, they come to the office because there's just a wealth of knowledge in here and we'll always make sure that you get to um, where you need to be. So, things like paying for excursions or signing in late to school, um, you'll come straight to the office here. Hello, Mrs. Gray. I didn't want to get in that video. <laughs> Here we have um, Mr. Howe's office. So Mr. Howe is our head teacher welfare. Okay, so if you ever need to find where he is, it's likely that he's going to be in here. Now, um, Mr. Howe is also an English teacher, so sometimes he can be found in the English staff room with myself and Miss Montgomery as well. Um, so I'll take you there very soon. Now we are going to head up to the maths rooms. And so, as I said, subject-specific classrooms, you'll come to know that um, on your timetable. Often they vary um, depending on um, your teacher. But generally, most of the time, your maths class will be up there. Classes, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop narrating while you walk through. Now you'll find here this is our learning pod. So if you're ever looking for SLSO or extra help with assessment tasks or if you ever need to talk to Joe or Will, who you'll come to know, um, you can find them here in the learning pod. 
announcement for the maths rooms. So if we keep heading around the corner, we find another maths room in here. And then, of course, next to the maths rooms, we have our maths staff room. So if you're ever looking for your maths teacher and they're not in the classroom, then it's likely that you'll find them in here. And then next to our math staff room, we have our school counsellor's office as well. Okay, so if you ever need to see a counsellor, it's likely that you'll go through either Mr. Howe, myself or Mrs. Montgomery. We can help you um, find the counsellor, but if you want to go straight here, you'll find um, counsellors here. onto the cement and um, so they're really popular at recess and lunch if you normally like to play handball we're gonna head up this step a little bit now in that corner unfortunately because um we have the hsc on at the moment we can't actually go into the library but you can see that access usually is where that red tape is um, just over in the corner there so above the library which is where we're heading now is the english staff room which is where you'll find mrs montgomery and myself at recess and lunch. So here is our English staff room. Um, so often you'll find Mrs. Montgomery um, or myself and sometimes Mr. Howe as well. Um, we hang out in here at recess and lunch time. If we come through, then it comes to the English room. And Miss Dawes' office, who is our last. And then, unfortunately, because of the HSC, we can't go into the hall, but you can see where it is from here. And then we'll head down these stairs. And we can see up in this big block up here, that is our TAS room. So if you ever have um, sort of technology, textiles, um, coding, cooking, um, any of those sort of classrooms are up there and around here. Um, and that concludes our tour. So we can't wait to see you. Hopefully this video helps. Um, don't worry if you don't remember everything and don't worry if you get confused because we'll make that first um, week for you very easy. What subject are you in? 
Science. Ooh, chemistry, that's very specific. It doesn't become chemistry until you're older. They're in, oh, I like these new pens, first time I've used this pen. They're in science. Who's heard of science before? Good, you all have, that would be weird otherwise. So science, so let me ask you, have you all heard of it? What is science? You all heard of it? What do you think it is? Science is everything, I like this kid. Okay, science is everything, maybe. When I was in high school, there was a poster up outside the science room that said everything is science and science is everything. Maybe a little bit oversimplified. What, anyone else, what do you guys think science is? Yeah? Finding out how stuff works. Ooh, finding out how stuff works. Now we get a little bit closer to what we kind of encourage you guys to think of as science, yeah? Studies of the elements, that could be true. We have that thing over there. Has anyone seen that periodic table of elements before? Who knows what it means? Ah, you get to find out about Oh, you do. Good stuff. You get to find out about that in year eight. Okay. Anyone else? What do you guys think science is? Who likes science? Okay, you don't. Who's like, nah, I would much rather be in an English class or a history class? Who's like, ah, oh, yeah, I guess it's okay. It's somewhere in the middle. Hmm, interesting. All right, I'm going to win you guys over by the end of the day. So the way I think of science is science is just get the letter process I think science is just a process that's all it is so we give you all these facts but really at the heart of it science is just trying to answer a question okay why is the sky blue does anyone know why the sky is blue why do you think the sky's blue? Rayleigh scattering. Rayleigh scattering. Excellent. What does that mean? It's, well, it's, it's, it's good. You're very, very, very close. You are correct with Rayleigh scattering and what it is. That's one reason. I'm not going to tell you guys because I think that would be a disservice to science. Why is the ocean blue? What do you think? Reflecting the sky, maybe? Wait, That's not I right. Dude, you are bang on. That's really good. Well done. Okay, so why is the sky blue? Basically, when the sun rays hits our atmosphere, the blue light gets scattered around a lot more than all of the other colours. It's mostly violet, but violet. Well, violet's up there, but our eyes can't actually see violet, believe it or not. Our eyes can only detect a certain violet. The one that gets scattered, bang! The one that gets scattered, we can't see. Which kind of sucks. Imagine having a purple sky. That'd be pretty cool, right? But other planets have different coloured skies because they have different stuff in the atmosphere. Okay? That's all really science is trying to do is answer these questions. Has anyone had a problematic question they've always wondered about in science? Ooh. Some question they've always wanted to know the answer for. None of you, none of you have any, had any questions and you're like, I can't answer this, I'm not sure why. Come on, you only come to this school if you want curious kids. Yeah. What's your question? Uh, oh, you have a question? Uh, oh, I'd like to know. Does anyone have any questions? I'm going to see if we get to answer them. You're going to have at least four years of science. Year 7 to year 10, you have to do science. Year 11 and 12, you don't have to do science anymore. In fact, science doesn't really exist in year 11 and 12. We break it up into its major areas. Yeah, there are five different major science areas in year 11 and 12. Chemistry, physics, biology. There's earth science is another one, and then there's another one called investigating science. But you guys can worry about that in about four more years time, okay? Right now we're doing science. All right, so no one's ever had a puzzling question. You guys are a much less chatty group than that first one, okay? Why can't we see violet? Why can't we see that light? That's a great question. I'm not gonna answer that. You'll find out all about that in year nine, why we can't see violet. Any other questions? Yeah? That's okay. Well, for now, you guys can call me, Mr. Bird have any questions that pop up along the way and I'm going to show you guys 
some of the ideas that I'm going to present with this whole idea of science being a process. So we have to be have use our imagination. So you guys that didn't like science, probably because you don't get to be as free and creative as you might be in like art and English and things like that, but I think that's wrong. Einstein said that imagination is far more important than knowledge, and I tend to agree. So I want us to imagine, just picture yourself, okay? You've woken up on a deserted island. No food, no water, pretty important things. There are five different lakes on the island, okay? You don't know which one you can drink from. Now, for some reason, you've got a complete scientific testing kit with you. Let's not get into the detail, but that's what we're going to pretend, okay? So our question is, which of these water sources is safe for me to drink, okay? Does that make sense? So that's our question we're going to solve by the end of this period, yeah? Okay, so put it under the microscope. Maybe you can look for microbes and things here and there. That's one possible thing. So science is a process. We've started with the question, which of these water sources is safe to drink? There's a step before we look under the microscope where we make a guess, okay? We start to assume this one will be, this one won't be. Does anyone know what we call that guess? Yeah? Well done. It's called a hypothesis. So hypothesis is our best guess. That's the next step in this process. Anyone know what the third step is? Yep. Well done. Testing that hypothesis. Now we've got an idea which of these water sources is safe to drink. We start to test our ideas. We don't go and drink it. We conduct different tests. We put it under the microscope. We can conduct water tests. We can do different kinds of things. We've got a whole test kit. If we look under the microscope, there's lots of little microbes swimming around in it. Maybe don't drink that one. Okay? So we start to test our ideas. After we've tested the ideas, we can put all our information together and come up with a conclusion. Yes, this one is safe to drink. None of them are safe to drink. Two of them are safe to drink. Whatever it is. Okay? Does that make sense? Awesome. All right, before we get into that, I'm going to give you a piece of background knowledge which I think will help today. Who's heard of an acid before? Excellent. Okay, so what is an acid? Does anyone know? Yeah? A fluid that dissolves things, so it's corrosive. Yeah, maybe. Acid. An acidic liquid. It can be a liquid can be a lot of things, but usually when we're talking acids, it's in liquids. So it does dissolve things. Are acids dangerous? Who thinks, yes, acids are dangerous? Who thinks, no, acids are not dangerous? Who thinks depends? Yeah. So you yourselves, guys, are actually acidic. If I go take some blood, it's slightly acidic. You have stomach acid, that's acidic in your body as well, okay? You have, actually, your blood's slightly basic. It doesn't matter. So you have different acids all over you. Anyone heard of DNA? What of you? So does anyone know what DNA stands for? It is. It's something acid. So it's still an acid. So you are packed full of acids. Anyone heard of citric acid? Where do you find citric acid? Sure. What about in the environment? Would you find citric acid in the environment? Oranges. Oranges. Lemons. Citrus fruits. Pineapples, well done. Okay, those citric acids. So acids sometimes are dangerous, sometimes not. Okay. The opposite of an acid is something we call a base. An acid will dissolve things, but so will a base, just in different ways. Okay. Both of these things are reasonably dangerous to drink. If something's acidic, you don't want to be drinking it. So if you're drinking water, these different lakes that we're testing are acidic or basic. Don't drink them. We're looking for something in the middle that we call neutral. Yeah, well done. Neutral water is neutral. Okay, pure water has a neutral pH. Okay, so these acids, let's change the pen color, have a very low pH. Bases have a very high pH. Okay, does that make sense? All right, any questions through that? All right, now because we are going to be dealing with chemicals, that's dangerous. A lab is probably one of the most dangerous places in the school. Our labs are set up so we have a theory side and a lab side, okay? 
Have a look around the room. You can see all the safety signs around the room, yeah? We don't make you guys wear leather shoes to school because teachers want you to dress like you're a 1920 spinster. We make you wear them to school because it's a safety issue, okay? Leather shoes must be worn in a lab. The only place more dangerous than a lab may be the TAS rooms, the workshops that have drills and circular saws and things in them, okay? In the lab, we have electricity, we have gas, we have uh, different chemicals, okay? It's a dangerous place to be in a lab. I would never, ever eat in a lab, okay? Certainly never drink or consume any chemicals, but if you miss recess or lunch, you come to a lab and say, oh, I missed my break, I haven't had a feed, I'm gonna have it here. I wouldn't do that because there's no guarantee that the period before you came, they weren't dissecting a lamb's kidney or something on that bench, okay? So these are unsafe rooms. You have to be careful, you have to be aware all the time, okay? That's the serious stuff. You wanna get into the fun stuff? All right, let's go. I've collected five different samples. Come on, come on, come on, come on down. So I've collected a sample from the five lakes. Okay, so here are our five lake samples. Have a look at those. Which one would you drink? You don't know? Why not? Can't you tell the difference? Do they all look the same? Maybe like I've filled up some a bit more. So they all look the same, so we can't tell. Okay, so we've got a problem. Our hypothesis would be right now, I don't know which one's safe to drink. I'm going to guess this one. Okay, so which one are we going to test first? That one. That one. Let's have a look. So right now we are looking for something that has what pH? Um, neutral. Neutral. Excellent. This here is universal indicator. It's a fancy test we can do for pH. If it's neutral, it goes green. Can you see how it's kind of green in the bottle? Yeah. Yeah. So that tells me it's neutral. That's what we're after. Okay. Let's try this one first. What color is that going? Purple. So if it's purple or dark blue, that tells us it's basic. Okay. So this is not safe to drink. Okay. All right. Which one should we try next? Who wants to have a hypothesis? This one? This one? Yeah. All right, this one. Got a few drops in there. What color is that going? Red. red. What does that tell us? Yes. 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 Acidic. Well done. Acidic of the reds. So right now, hang on, Joe. Let's chop. What are they for? What are they for? Dry. Dry. Okay. All right. So this one's gone red. That tells us it's acidic. So that is. Awesome, which one are we gonna test next? This one next? Okay. Oh, it's going a different color. It's like a yellowy orange color, right? A little bit, no, that's a little bit acidic. I like where your head's at though. So what we end up with is like a color spectrum. It's not quite as acidic as this, it's gone yellow. So it's slightly acidic, so that might not be safe to drink either. You probably, could drink something that's a little bit acidic, you would anyway. Who drinks fizzy drinks here? Yeah, you're drinking something that's slightly acidic already. All right, here's our next one. Let's test this out. It's gone purple again. That tells us it's basic, so it's. I'm gonna guess all of them are on all right, so what does that tell us the pH of this one is? Neutral. Neutral, that's right. This I got from the Lake of Tap, okay? This sample. So that tells us it's neutral. It would be safe to drink, except it came from a tap in a science lab. Don't drink it, okay? All right, does that make sense? So at the beginning, we couldn't see the difference between those waters. Can we see now? Yeah. There's yeah. definitely a very noticeable difference. Yeah, but now that okay? you put that green liquid in the water, is it still safe to drink? No, it is not. This green liquid is not safe to drink, so that's why we only do a sample. If we're going to test your blood, we don't take all of your blood to test. We only take a little bit of it, okay? So it's the same with the water. When we are doing testing in science, that's what we take. Just a little bit of stuff to test. All right, makes sense. So now should we go to the lake and drink it? Well, it's just told us if it's acidic or basic. Because it could have like, bacteria in it. Well done. There might be other stuff in the water that's unsafe. It could still be neutral, but it could, still could have other stuff in there. Now, what's really interesting about this is that even though that's neutral right now, the nature of the world can actually change that liquid. Can anyone tell me the biggest problem of our time right now? Yeah. Climate change. Can anyone tell me what climate change is? What's happening with that? Yep. Uh, 
the world is becoming warmer. Yeah, it's becoming warmer, absolutely. Anyone know why? Um, the carbon dioxide is trapped, so heat can't get out. Um, basically what happens is when there's too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, heat cannot get out, and heat just comes in and doesn't get out, so it starts warming up. Excellent. So extra carbon dioxide has trapped heat. It's like having a thicker blanket on the earth. Okay, so that's trapped the heat in, yeah? The extra heat's melting ice caps. We're going to see sea level rise. Well, sometimes uh, in Alaska, when it melts too much, some bacteria can just come back to life. Properly. Some bacteria that have been frozen, yeah, will come back to life. These are all very terrestrial issues. What do I mean by terrestrial? Yeah. Like things like on Earth. On Earth, close. Specifically the land. And fair enough, we live on the land. But some of the biggest problems with climate change is actually in the water. CO2 in the atmosphere does lead to extra heat being trapped. But what actually happens is that CO2 doesn't necessarily stay in the atmosphere. It can also go into the oceans. And it increases with decreases or decreases pH levels? It certainly does. Okay, so anyone know what gas we breathe in? Oxygen. Oxygen, that's the gas we need. And what gas are we breathing out? Carbon. carbon dioxide. So we all agree on breathing out carbon dioxide. So if I add carbon dioxide to something that's neutral, it's water. Watch what happens. Now it's closer in pH to that, in fact it's even less, more acidic than that. Okay, so adding all that extra carbon dioxide is actually turning our oceans acidic as well. Yeah? Just wondering, the, what did the purple do? It did, I added extra water to that, I was hoping it would turn blue, so this is actually, let's line it up so it's proper, okay? So that's basic, that's acidic, that's slightly less acidic, that was neutral, and that's slightly less basic than that, okay? It's actually a really nice little rainbow there. What do you think? We like that? Pretty? That's how I wanted it. That looks normal. Hey? Hey? Yeah. All right. So adding all that extra CO2, adding extra stuff, we can actually change the environment too. So what we've done is we've had a question, which water is safe to drink? We've now answered that question, that one. But we've also now been able to take it further. How can we use that information? Well, I can change the pH. I can manipulate the pH of water. You guys want to have some fun with manipulating pH now? Right, let's go. Spin around. Can you remove carbon dioxide from? No. Alright. So this here is called a safety flame because we can see it. It's not very hot, it's still hot enough to be a bad idea to put your hand through it. But the safety flame is that because it's quite bright orange and it's very visible. We agree? Okay. Usually when we're heating stuff, first thing we do, safety goggles on, make sure your hair is tied back. You guys don't seem to have hair ties if you have long hair and no safety goggles, so everyone's going to take half a step back. This is going to fog off the glasses, so I'm just going to pull this down here. All right. So if we keep turning this, we let more oxygen in and we have what's called a heating flame. Much harder to see, not as bright, much, much hotter. Okay, this is not one of those things where you like impress your friends by passing your hand through a flame. You go to a hospital if you do that, okay? In your first year, year seven, one of the first things you end up doing is a Bunsen burner license test. You guys remember your pen license? Yeah. So it's kind of like that, but way more dangerous. Okay, like you can lose eyebrows and things with it. So your Bunsen burner test, we as science teachers need to see that you are able to use a Bunsen burner safely, okay? So that's one of the first things you're going to do. Alright, once you've got your Bunsen burner license, we use Bunsen burners for a lot of different stuff. Depending on what it is, sometimes some stuff's flammable, we don't use Bunsen's with them, obviously. Some stuff though, we just need to heat up gently, you don't need to have a super hot flame for it. Otherwise, Bunsen's very handy piece of equipment. Question? Is fire hollow? It's fire hollow. You mean in the middle? Yeah. Uh, not exactly. Here, let's show you what I mean. Wait, I heard something as invisible fire. Does that exist? Invisible fire does certainly exist. If you get it hot enough, you can certainly have invisible flames. One of the reasons I turn the light up is it is a lot easier to see the flame. Alright, so fire is not hollow, necessarily. 
but it does heat at different spots. So if I hold this way up here, not much, not much is going to happen. Okay, you can see that it's starting to get a little bit red. There, we can see that red spot there, maybe a little bit. If I hold this down right above the blue spot, that's the hottest part of the flame, it gets real hot real quick. Okay, you see that? Ooh, see that? It's sort of glowing a bit better. All right, if I go below the blue spot though, so it's now squashing the blue, what I end up with is a hollow flame. So you end up with that circle shape. See that donut shape there? What is that stuff? Okay, this here yeah. is a gauze. So if I've got this sitting on something, I can put a beaker on top of it and it'll spread the heat out around. Okay, so if it's too far low, you end up with like a hollow flame, you end up that donut shape. So you've got to have this sitting at the right height. Okay, well, I'll put that in there for now. Never, ever, ever run water over hot stuff because you cause it to rust and break. Okay. All right, going back to our original question. So we've tested the water. We know which water is neutral. So it's not acidic, it's not basic. That's gonna be better for us to drink. But it might contain different microbes. Say we've used a microscope, we've identified no microbes in it. That could be a bad sign, because usually if there's available water that's ready to drink, there will be microbes living in it. So there might be something else in the water. Specific toxins, okay? Heavy metals, poisons, okay? So certain metals, here are a bunch of metals over that side, they all have different structures. The atoms that make them up are very slightly different. Because they're very slightly different, when we expose them to energy or heat, they actually behave differently as well. So we put energy into the atom and the energy it spits out, because they're different atoms, the energy they spit out is very slightly different too, okay? So we have this chemical here, sodium chloride. Anyone know what sodium chloride is better known as? Uh, salt? Correct. Your boring old table salt. That's what sodium chloride is. Sodium, over there, see the one that says Na? Up there, no, not that long enough. The one that says Na. Is an incredibly reactive metal. Okay, if I put that metal in water, it explodes. Chlorine is a gas that's really toxic, it was used in World War I as part of mustard gas. Okay, you breathe in chlorine, you go to the hospital, you're lucky to survive. Okay? Sodium chloride, stable salt. You need that in your diet to survive. Sodium by itself, very dangerous. Chlorine by itself, very dangerous. Sodium chloride, totally fine. Okay? So even how we mix chemicals changes how they react. We can have a look at what certain chemicals are in something by something called the flame test. So I've had these paddle pop sticks soaking in it. And if we have a look this, it says sodium should produce a what colour flame? Yellow. Yellow. Okay, so if I hold this out, see that flame goes yellow? And look, I haven't burned the paddle pop stick, so it's definitely the sodium burning. You see any burn marks on there? No, so it's not the wood burning, that's the sodium. So if you perform a flame test, you know, hey, in my water supply, there's sodium. Do we drink salt water? No. No, bad idea. So that water might not be safe to drink if it burns bright yellow like that. There could be too much salt in it, okay? Too much sodium. All right, let's save this one, because I reckon that looks cool. I'll save the best to the last, day. Eh? This one here, can I, who likes to read stuff? Whose English is their favorite subject? Great, come on down. Can I get you to read this for us? The whole. Just that side. Toxic to aquatic life with long lasting effects, causes skin irritation, may cause allergy or asthma, symptoms or breathing, difficulties in, oh, wait or asthma symptoms or breathing difficulties if inhaled. May cause an allergic skin reaction, toxic to aquatic life, causes serious eye damage. Okay, does that sound like something you'd want in your drinking water? No. No, now I've added a lot in there, that's why the water's gone that reddishy pink color. This is called cobalt, okay? Cobalt can be quite dangerous. It's not on my list here, so let's see what color we turn the flame. Not very much, kind of like a sparkly, yellow almost isn't it but if we keep heating it up and dry it all out what we end up doing is turning our paddle pot blue you see that so there's a positive test for cobalt okay so we've gone from a red liquid to a blue solid you see that what was your question ah, well we'll find out all right so cobalt you yeah, that test in there we know that water is now not safe to drink all right, this one is 
Barium, is barium on that list? Yeah. What does it say it should go? Lime green. Lime green. Mm, this one doesn't work, so we'll wait and see. So if we hold this there, try and get the barium. It's not really turning in lime green, is it? Not really. Maybe, maybe flickers of it. But that one doesn't work too well, to be honest. So barium's a bit hard to see, maybe a lime green. That was sort of a much yellow, yellower flame, but you can see as well I've burnt the stick, so maybe the stick was in there too. Barium, a bit harder to see. Let's pretend that one didn't happen. All right, next one, calcium. What are we looking for with calcium? Orange to red. Orange and red colours. All right, so we hold this in. So you can see it's a much, much redder flame compared to the sodium before, right? And now it's starting to go a little bit orange. That tells us that there's calcium in that water. Calcium makes something we call heavy water, okay? It's not very good for cleaning, but depending on the amount of calcium, it's not that bad for drinking. Wouldn't drink too much of it though. All right, next one is potassium. Is potassium on that list? Yeah. What does it say? Violet lilac. Violet lilac. This one doesn't work very well either, so don't cross your fingers and your toes. So looking for a purpley flame. Oh, maybe a little bit. No, it's starting to burn the wood now. Let's try another piece. Oh, can we see any purple flame in there? Maybe a little, it might just be the flame itself. Maybe slightly purple in there. Now it's starting to burn the wood. Maybe a little bit, sure. Okay, potassium again, not too bad to have in there, not too much though. All right, strontium, definitely don't want strontium in your drinking water. What color is it gonna go for it's strontium? Scarlet. Scarlet, anyone know what scarlet is? Like red. Like really red, so we're expecting this one to go really red, right? Okay, so this is going bright red. Nifty, right? It's one of my favorites. I like the strontium one. All right, so we know that the water supply might have strontium in it now. Bad idea to drink. Last one, my personal favorite is this blue stuff. It's got ca uh, copper in it. Copper, very bad to drink. Okay, you definitely don't want copper. It has strong antiseptic properties. It doesn't, things that go in copper don't survive very well for very long. Okay, what color are we expecting here? Um, blue to green. Blue to green, you ready? So, can flames be green? Yeah. Cool. Is that not cool? I'm not gonna it's cool. It's like the villains. Can you do that one again? You wanna do that one again? It's a Shrek. Shrek one? Can we set the actual liquid on fire? No, the liquids won't burn. So you need to have something that's actually flammable underneath it, or something that can hold the liquids. So there it is. Anything that contains copper will go bright green. Does anyone know what brass is? Yeah. Brass is a combination between uh, tin and copper. These are brass tongs, they've got copper in them. If you're holding something that has brass tongs for long enough, you should end up getting flicks of green flame. Hopefully I don't burn my fingers, because the brass tongs will get hot. Oh, we're gonna get a bleed. Come on, are you gonna cooperate? Sometimes we get a green flame. It's much cooler to just put the copper straight in, right? Does the, it's not gonna work for me. Say lovely. Does Question. The, um, like the coloured flames work if you have a less hot fire? Uh, they can, but it looks better. If you've got a less hot fire like this one, there is other stuff burning in there, which is what makes it go that colour. So all the, there's not enough oxygen in there to keep it a clean flame, if you will. It doesn't burn completely, and that's what makes the red flame. So now if I put copper, which was a really obvious one in, like it doesn't change all that much. It should still change. There, you can see a little bit of green in there, but it's not that good. So you need that really hot, clean flame. So can we see a little bit of green in there? Yeah. It's not the same though, is it? Question. Fire is a plasma, which is a fancy way of saying that it's kind of like a gas, but what happens is the electrons start flicking off it. And you'll learn all about that next year in year seven. Okay. Board technology and applied studies, pretty official term, uh, but basically it just means a lot of practical um, items that we do. So the little kind of, uh, or I'd say like a scaffold in a way for you guys for next year. You're all going to do what's called tech mandatory for year seven and year eight. Uh, in tech mandatory, you get a little taster for all the different areas of TAS. 
uh, being food tech, uh, IPT, which is computers and coding, robots and things. Uh, timber as well, we get to do a bit of timber and lace cutting, and uh, also textiles. So I've taught textiles and I've taught timber. I'm more of a specialty in timber, but my textiles classes have a lot of fun, and they learn a little bit, I think. I'm, I'm, that's an area that I'm learning on as well. Uh, so if you like those, that sort of uh, this area of TAS, when you get to year nine and 10, you get to pick electives and you get to specialise in an area. So year nine, you can go into engineering studies, uh, design and technology, textiles, you can get to make um, garments and things, food technology, uh, also IPT, which is information processing technology, computers, and IST software, which is websites, etc., and robotics. We're also bringing out a lot of other courses like uh, graphics, multimedia, um, yeah, and others too, which I'll bring to mind at the moment. So that's year 9 and 10. A lot of the time, our, our 9 and 10 courses are pretty full on, pretty fun. Uh, there are a lot of cracks, 60% crack, 40% research and theory and planning and stuff like that, okay? We'll talk more about that a little bit uh, maybe next year. So Taz, what do we do? We're actually specialised people, all right? A lot of us, I would say all of us, didn't just jump straight into teaching. We've, um, we have some professional backgrounds, uh, the members of our faculty. And uh, we like to, to think that we're practical people. So the little slogan, we use research and planning to construct, evaluate and redesign practical solutions to complicated problems. Basically means we use our hands, okay? Anyone here like to use your hands to do stuff? Think of themselves a bit of an inventor? Yeah, you do a bit of, do, anyone do, do a bit of gaming, a bit of coding or anything? That's using your hands? Yeah, no, anyone use a hammer and nail before? Yeah, drill driver, make things, yeah. Yeah, well, if you like that sort of stuff, then this really is uh, an area that you could probably really like. That's cool. So, like I was saying before, a lot of the teachers here, we specialise in timber. I've got a carpentry and uh, graphics background. I worked for an architectural company for a long time. Uh, textiles as well. So come, uh, a couple of our teachers are really highly specialised textiles um, makers, okay, like hats, garments, etc. Food as well, some food science, uh, computers, uh, also, engineering, Mr. White, who's the other junior teacher, who's next door, he's got a senior class at the moment, he's a, a proper engineer, okay, he trains a teacher, design and also graphics. So myself and Mr. Groom both come from a graphics uh, a background and uh, they're me being more landscape uh, design, okay, and that's definitely we bring those kind of trade practices into school. Now, what do you guys do today in the next few minutes? What have I got here? 12.50, so when do we go? You've got to be there at 20 past, is that right, sir? Yeah. Okay, I've got two challenges. You'll see I've got station one here. Okay, I have three vehicles. Uh, this is very similar to what you'll be doing next year in a little unit we call e-machine. You actually model the, uh, some, uh, use some foam to model a carcass or a, a mold. We then use something called vacuum forming, which is basically a sheet of plastic. Uh, heat it up, sucks the air out of it, and the whole mould takes the form of what the foam that you've shaped did. You then turn it into a little vehicle, and then you run a whole heap of tests in it. So these are a couple of donated ones from this year's group, which you guys get to play around with. Basically, the last few bits of it, we just do a bit of speed testing on this. Uh, over here, I've got some battery packs, some six volt packs, three vehicles. And if you read off the board there, is that you are going to be calculating more specifically, more correctly, is the speed of each vehicle. So as you can see, uh, you'll be breaking, I'll split you down the middle in, into groups, okay? Maybe a group of four and a group of six, seeing that we've got 10 students. And uh, using the formula on the board, uh, which is the speed, what you're trying to find equals the distance over time. So I'm gonna need two timers. I've got a distance marked in the form here, which is three meters. You'll need to have two people on the stopwatches to get the time. Obviously, between the two timekeepers, you have to get the average of that for each vehicle, all right? Make sure you use uh, these six volt packs and not the three volt packs because more power means faster and it's just more fun, all right? So, we have the frog. We have the purple car. I would have thought the groups would have been a bit more inventive with that name, but anyway, purple car and the avocado. Okay, 
You also need a couple of data people, as you can see on the board here. You can put your data and your calculations up on the board there. Now, we don't have too much time to do that between the two groups. It's roughly 10 to 12 minutes for group one to work on the speed of each vehicle. Now, even more fun is the aerodynamic group up here. So I've got six there, I'll have four over here. And this thing's called a power anchor. It's basically a large battery which will operate a, uh, in this case, a three volt motor with a little propeller on it. And the rest of the body is just foam and balsa wood. It's obviously a little plane. Now, who knows, who knows a bit about plane? Anyone interested in aircraft at all? Yeah, no? Yeah, a little bit? Um, if you have more, like, you know, if you push against, if you go faster, um, then the drag force, you'll create thrust forward, and then if, you, if you, you know, yeah. start lifting up, and if that's enough to exceed gravity forces, it creates lift, and then thrust and lift equals its weight. Mate, you, you are going to do really well here then, I think. Uh, what you're talking about there is the uh, lift-drag ratio, is that correct? Great, that's well advanced. We'll look at that in year 11, but... What we're going to do here today is we're going to put that theory into practice. Basically, you're going to play around with these little, uh, they're called aerons or elevators, okay? And basically, we're just going to adjust the pitch, which means to move them up or down to get a nice lift. So the challenge is if you can get the plane to lift above this bench height, okay? So you need to do uh, to play around with the angle of these aerons for that. That's the first uh, thing. There's two aircraft, okay, so obviously if you complete, uh, complete one, start with the second. If you get through that, we're then going to adopt the speed formula to planes. So what you need to do, obviously I have a radial measurement here, you'll need to understand how you can calculate a circumference of a circle from a radius. Does anyone know how to do that? Yeah, okay, it's good, keep, keep it to yourself. Alright, that's the challenge, this is the one over here, because uh, that, that requires a little bit of thinking, and I'm not going to give you the answer straight away. All right? This is really simple. Make sure you're all standing back. There's two controllers. Basically, you press the button, and away we go. So I'm at level flight there. Your challenge is to make sure that you can adjust that as air to see if you can get it up a little bit higher. Okay? All right. Hi, seven. My name is Miss Rundle. I'm one of the visual arts teachers here at Gosford High School. Now, what I'm doing with you today is showing you a tutorial on how to create a roll of Picasso, which was the task that we did on the ESX orientation day. Um, so, what you would need for this particular task is a printout, which you can find online, a roll of Picasso. You will need a permanent marker or a black texture. A dice, now this can be physical or it can actually be a digital dice, it doesn't matter. And for this activity today, we're going to be using oil pastels. However, you can complete this task on whatever medium you like. You can do it digitally, you can use markers, you can use oil pastels like we are here, or you could even use colored pencils. You can use any mediums that you like. So this is achievable for everybody, um, regardless of what you have at home. So the premise of this task is pretty self-explanatory. It's a dice. We've got our dice numbers here and we've got our features um, across the top here. So for whatever number you get on each roll is the feature that you're going to draw. So let's get started. Here is my sheet. There are my pastels. Here's my permanent marker and here's my dice. Now you can do this with a uh, lead pencil first, if you're not as confident as a draw of a drawer, sorry. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to go straight in with my permanent marker because it's Picasso, he's abstract, it doesn't have to be perfect. Alrighty, let's go for our head shape now. Number six, so that means I'm going to be having this potato kind of pickle looking guy. So I'll make sure that I'm filling out um, a large portion of my canvas or my piece of paper, depending on whether or not you're doing this digitally. Now, what we wanna do next if, is we actually wanna give them a neck and shoulders. Now, this can be whatever kind of style you like. Remember, it's abstract, it's Picasso, so it doesn't need to be perfect. All right, let's bring this back down. Second roll is our first eye, number one. So 
I know this one's looking this way, so I'm going to do something here. Remember, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's Picasso, he's abstract. So that's kind of our aim, is to be as abstract as possible. Alrighty, our second eye. We've got another number one. Beautiful. Let's go for our nose now. Number three is this guy here. All right, here's our mouth. Now, I've gotten this mouth every single time I've done this activity, so I don't know what is happening with my rolls. We've got our first ear is number five. So this is our right hand ear. And this is a really fun activity you could do at home with your parents or your friends. Um, and obviously the more abstract, the better because it is Picasso. Alrighty, so there is my face. I've done all of my rolls. As you can see, it was really, really simple. Now I'm going to maybe give them a little bit of a, a shirt and some crazy hair. I might even give them a little Adam's apple. Great, so now this is the point where you would start coloring. Now, if you know your color wheel well, you know your primary and secondary colors, um, you could use complementary colors, which are opposite sides of the color wheel, um, or you could just use some of your favorite colors to color in. Now, I'm gonna show you one that I started yesterday. This fella is on a huge piece of paper, but as you can see, this is one that I started yesterday during our orientation lesson. It's obviously not finished because this is actually gigantic, as you can see, compared to this one. Um, but I did my roller Picasso. I turned out with these different features. I added some nice happy cheeks in here. Um, and then I just used a bunch of colors. I really love um, rainbow bright colors so this is the kind of color scheme that I chose but you can do whatever color scheme you like now as you can probably see there's some textures in here and all I did was I used this kebab stick or any object that has a bit of a point on it um, and I actually carved into the um, oil pastel so let's give it a go here and this is a really really fun technique that you can do if you are using oil pastels now, when I was coloring my features, the oil pastel did get over the initial permanent marker. You can do one of two things. You can scratch it away using your kebab skewer or object that you're using, or you can just go over the top of it with uh, oil pastel or a marker. Just make sure you wipe your marker clean. With oil pastels, let's finish this lip here. With oil pastels, you can either smudge with your finger or you can actually blend them and lay them on top of each other to blend the colors together, as you can see here. But as I said, you can use any medium for this. It does not have to be oil pastels. I chose oil pastels for this activity because a lot of you have used it in primary school and it's something that you're familiar with. And it's also a medium that has uh, an array of different colors and it's nice and fun to use. But if you don't like getting your hands messy or you don't like the feeling of oil pastels, it's completely fine. Like I said, you can do this with colored pencil, you can do it with a marker, you could do it with crayon if you really like, or you can do it digitally. The possibilities are endless. I hope you enjoyed uh, this tutorial and this activity for our orientation. And one thing I want you to remember going forward and coming into visual arts next year, if visual arts hasn't been your strength in primary school, I want you to scrunch up that idea and I want you to throw it in the bin, okay? Visual arts in primary school is a lot more craft-based, okay? And visual arts in high school is a lot more skill-based and we're building your skills so that you can get to the mastery level. 
or your skills um, are at different levels. Some people might be hobbyists and they do a little bit of extra drawing at home. So their skills might be a little bit more advanced than you if you're only just starting out. But what I want you to remember going forward is that you are the leader of your own journey to mastery. And what that means is that you're in charge of your attitude and you're in charge of how well you do and how passionate you are. And our goals here at Gosford High School, especially in visual arts, is to help you master your skills. So come in with a fresh attitude next year. I don't want to hear anybody say I'm bad at art. It doesn't exist. Okay, I want you to come in here with a positive attitude, um, a brand new slate, and I really look forward to seeing you next year. Hope you enjoyed this activity. Um, see you in 2022. Bye.
There's also a question like where you work and you buy uniforms and stuff. Well, we have a uniform shop which is right near the math block, and you can either buy it online. The uniform shop has changed position. It's no longer near the math block. It's going to be in the hall. Yeah. And like, but it's better to go to the uniform shop and like try on the sizes as well with your uniforms. So, like you're sure that you get this size as well, just in case it doesn't like. You tell that's more when you order it online. And there's also a question about the jumpers. Like there's a winter jumper and there's a normal jumper. They said they asked like, do you, do you have to buy two jumpers? No, you actually don't have to buy one two jumpers. You can buy like you can buy both if you want to. But the summer jumper is actually pretty good for both. And the winter jumper just has like a lot more like freezing inside as well to keep it more warm as well. Um, and also another one is about the school bags. We do offer gospel high school bags, but you don't have to bring them to school. I know I bring just a random bag of time. You know, I was wearing a high school bag the other day, but gospel bags are really good because they're very big. You've got pockets to fit all your books in there. Yeah, like there's three different sections. Like I usually keep my books on my laptop in the back one, and then I have all my food in the middle one, and then I have like my other items at the front. But if you do want to bring another bag, just make sure it doesn't get too like small because you're going to need a lot of books depending on which day, like which day and which subjects you have on that day as well. Um, so now it's like getting around the school. Basically, it's just how do people get around the school? Well, you can, on our timetable, like next to it, there's always like a classroom. And basically, as you run around the school tour, you would just like need to know where, like, where the classroom is, following the stairs. But if you ever do have and you're getting lost, just don't be afraid to ask another student because they're all going to be very helpful. But if you're like completely unsure, just go to the office and they're going to tell you like where to go as well. Another thing of um, my like first two weeks at Johnson, I was really lost. I didn't know anything was. I always just went back to the main board and from there I could find my way to my classroom. So that's just a skip if you guys want to get lost. Like you said, just go up to anyone. Japanese and French the only languages? Unfortunately, yeah. I think we might opt for Spanish in my Once we get to senior, there's a little bit more options, but in junior, it's just, yeah, French and Japanese. Okay. 
Really good question. Are you allowed to use your phone at school or do you have to put it in the office? Um, you can do research at lunch, but not during class. Unless you forget your laptop and you can like research With your teacher's permission? Yeah. Always teacher ask permission to use phone instead of laptop. Okay, what's your phone? Yeah, do you have to bring your own laptop? Yeah, bring your own laptop, but if you do forgetting, if you do end up forgetting, there are some in the library, you can sign in, um, sign them out, and then by the end of the day when you finish with it, you sign it back. If you borrow it from the library, though, you have to go there before class starts, so before 9 o'clock. Where do you put your bags at recess and lunch? It depends where you sit, like if you sit and go play something else, you probably like, leave it with your like, good friend, like just normally with your bag. Well, that's a really good question. It's the question we're going to end on because it is now recess. How long is recess and lunch? Recess is 20 minutes and lunch is 40. Okay, now, it's a little bit different today though, guys, because you're going to get a little bit of extra recess, a little bit of extra lunch to make sure, uh, as I said, that you're back here in time and you're not mixing, unfortunately, with the other year groups. So your recess is going to go from about a minute's time um, until... Uh, basically you hear the bells go and then you will stay here and uh, you will go to a new uh, class with your uh, elves and new teachers. What's your question? Uh, you can't play basketball. Okay, today it's just going to be handball over here, okay, in this area. Okay, so you can't play basketball today, unfortunately. Okay, so we're just handball and really importantly, you are just going to stay in this half of the control. Yeah. Where would you be? Okay, so the, uh, the daily schedule, sorry, I'll take this one. This one is something your teacher will read to you at the beginning of your theory in the Bible class. All right, but can you please give our Year 7 transition team a big round of applause for how you want to do you guys have done? Okay, now, guys, obviously you should have all 